Hi guys, welcome back to LTF1 and we've got the first of our race weekend previews for you today. Before we get into that, please make sure to like and subscribe the video, even share it with your friends. If you're enjoying our content, we just passed 200 subscribers and we'd like to hit the next milestone soon. So starting off, it has been a very Formula One start to the Formula One season. We've got rumors flying, sandbagging, woes, everything that we would have expected from the start of the season. Testing went very well for a few teams and a little bit weird for a couple of others. So heading into the first race of the season, we've got Bahrain. Now Bahrain, unfortunately, we're not getting the shorter track and it was used for testing, but I still think we're going to get a good race out of it. The field seems to be a little bit mixed up, which will help. And the track has been good for overtaking and just spectacle in the last few years. Under the lights, sparks flying, it's always a good race. And I think it's going to be a much better opener than Australia normally is. Getting into the teams, I think the biggest headline story is that Mercedes don't look like they're having the best of times this year. But it has also been reported that they've found the problem and are working on a solution. So even if they are weak in Bahrain, I wouldn't expect that to continue. But Lewis Hamilton might have a couple of tenths in his back pocket. So I'd still be on the lookout for him. Red Bull, very strong testing. Could be a front row appearance for them in Bahrain for the first time in a long time. They looked solid, got a lot of running done, and the car looks stable, most importantly. Perez looked like he got up to speed quite fast, so hopefully Red Bull will have two cars in the fight against Mercedes. It's over. I just feel like it's about to start, you know. I think it's the shortest precision ever in my career. Um, so yes, uh, very limited amount of running in, in testing. Um, we are improving every time we are in the car. We, we seem to be getting more comfortable. We were able to get through through different uh, setup uh, items and um, yeah, I think uh, now um, we just have to, to look forward to, to the race weekend because uh, conditions are going to be very different when we come back here. Uh, we're tricky today with the wind, um, but yeah, um, all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with, with my precision test. Now the team that people are saying, or at least Ted Kravitz is saying, could be second in line is McLaren. And this surprised me, but some people in the paddock are saying that after a really strong first day, McLaren dulled it down as to hide their performance. So for the first time, they were sandbagging. And that wouldn't surprise me. In the Alonso era, they used to come out in testing and say, we've got the best chassis on the grid, we've got this, we've got that, and they disappoint. They seem to have moved away from that now, they're being more modest. So I can definitely see them having sandbag during testing. If they have, then it could be a killer first race for Daniel Ricciardo because he's got all the skill and expertise that he needs to drag the best out of that car and qualify away up the grid on that first race and qualify quite a way up the grid with Lando Norris for this first race weekend. Seems so far so good after two days or two thirds of pre-season testing. How was it for you? So far so good, yeah. I think, um, I mean, yeah, obviously everyone watching at home, they've seen me be top of both of my sessions but don't get me wrong it's nice to see that but I, I certainly don't get carried away with it in testing um, you just never know what what everyone's doing but it's in, in, important I focus on myself and you know it's been running well you know it's smoothly I think first thing you want to get is reliability and, and that's been strong so far so it's allowed us to do the laps we need um, I think all I'm missing now is, is a night session you know I've had two of the morning kind of daytime sessions and the track's hot and uh, we do come here in the evening. So I, tomorrow I'm, I'm on track at night and uh, I think then I'll get a probably a better feeling inside of like how comfortable and, and let's say ready I am with this car for, for two weeks time. A team that I thought was going to disrupt this, Alpine, doesn't look like they're going to. Alonso's come out saying that the car's slow and that Q3 performances would be good from them, which is something I didn't expect. They also had a pretty solid testing, lots of laps in. And although the car looked thick it looked like it might be going somewhere but that might just be gamesmanship from Alonso we'll have to see I wouldn't be surprised to see them leading the midfield another team that we thought would be leading the midfield Aston Martin beautiful car in my opinion you shouldn't disagree with me but not the greatest of testing performances Sebastian Vettel getting less laps over the weekend than Kimi Raikkonen got in a day on one of the days and it's just quite disappointing from them it seems to be power unit related problems and electronics problems so hopefully 
with Mercedes's help, they've got that sorted for the first re- race weekend. And if they have, and now that they've had a year to understand that Mercedes philosophy car, you would expect big things from them. But Seb having just moved into the team, Lance Stroll, Bar Turkey, showing that he's not the best qualifier, I think it could be a low key start to the season for them. Another midfield team, AlphaTauri, again looking very strong. We know that the relationship in Red Bull has gone from a junior team to assist the team. And that will probably mean that AlphaTauri are allowed or even pushed to compete further up the grid. Not as far as to say a Red Bull 1, 2, 3, 4, but I can see them mixing it with the top of the midfield, maybe giving Renault and Aston Martin a decent run for their money on their day. Down the back of the grid, we're all wondering who's going to be last, Williams or Haas. Haas, rookie lineup, they're going to have to take a second to get used to it. And they didn't take the new Ferrari power unit in terms of the gearbox, but they've produced a good car before. There's no reason they can't do it again. Although it's looking unlikely with Gene looking like he wants to walk out, new sponsors coming in, new drivers coming in, a turbulent year last year. They could be the slowest team. But that is great news for Williams. Some even saying that they might be able to mix it at the back of the midfield. It would be very good to see. And if anyone's going to be able to qualify that car, it will be George Russell, just whether he can keep that up in the race. My predictions, I think we're going to see the same people on top this week. It might be a good race, but it's going to be another midfield race. I really can't see Mercedes dropping the ball. I think the biggest surprise of the weekend really is going to be McLaren. I'm hoping, I'm a McLaren fan, I'm hoping they're going to be able to get up there with Red Bull on pace. Maybe even Ferrari with something of a comeback, but again, their testing wasn't anything to shout about. We'll just have to see. As always, we'll have our race rundown straight after the race on Sunday evening. We'll record that and get it up for you as soon as we can. But yeah, see you then. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, Like, share and subscribe if you want to see more. Feels really weird doing these videos by myself.